we're so excited to join you this morning virtually. Thank you so much for tuning in online this morning. I want you to take the opportunity right now to share, share, share. Bring everybody you know into our worship experience this morning. Wherever you are, stand to your feet and let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before. Oh, 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 oh. I want to jump higher than before. Come on, jump. I want to shout louder. Sing a little louder than before. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I want to spin wilder oh. than before. Yeah. Oh, I want to shout louder than before. Yeah. Cause we are living in freedom. 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 Free. my hands higher than before. I want to love you more than before. Oh, oh, oh. I want to worship deeper than before. Chapel, and we want to connect with you this morning. If this is your first time joining us, just please take a moment. You can visit our website, anchorchapel.com, and fill out a connect card so that we can get to know you, that we can know how to pray for you, that we can know how to serve your family during these times. And also, we want to invite you to connect with us 
As part of the Anchor family, one thing that we truly believe in is giving generously. And so there's so many ways that we can give right here at Anchor Chapel. And that is on our website at anchorchapel.com or you can send a text to 84321. And that way you can connect with us in your generosity as we continue to push the vision forward right here at Anchor Chapel, amen? Amen. We love you so much and we just wanted to take a moment this morning as we gather in homes, as, as you, you, you steal away at work and as you're driving on the highway joining us, we wanted to just invite you in to how we worship at home with our family, amen? Amen, so just, just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you in whatever way he chooses this morning and sing along with us. The words will be on the screen and I hope that you're encouraged this morning because we serve a God that always makes a way, amen? Amen, hallelujah. Yes, God. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through this test, but holding on to faith you know best. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You got this figured out and you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can't win, wrap us in your arms and step in.
but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know why, but I'm grateful.
Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence, Lord God, meeting us this morning, Father. We pray right now for every single person who has a need. Lord God, I pray that you touch them in this moment. We send the word, Lord God, for healing, for breakthrough, for whatever it is that they are calling out in the midnight hour for you to do in their lives, Lord God. We trust and believe that you are a God who hears, you are a God who sees, and you are a God who moves in the lives of your children. We love you. We praise you, Lord God, and we know that there is hope for every soul, Lord God. We know that your presence is near to every single person at every single moment of our life, Lord God. You created us and called us for such a time as this. So we honor you, we praise you in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Let's all say it together, amen. Come on, right there where you are, put your hands together for the Most High God. He is deserving of our worship. He is deserving of our praise. Hey, I'm so <coughs> excited to be here before you in this platform and in this moment. It's amazing how God redeems everything. You know, in the past they thought technology was such a bad thing. But now we're using this technology and the airways to redeem the airwaves. They call him the prince of the power of the air, but now the gospel is going through the airways, making it right there to your home. We are redeeming everything the enemy stole from us. And so right here in this moment, right there in your home, I want you to just lift your hands and give God the best shout that you have on the inside because you know he is a good God. And when his glory shows up, our lives show up. Come on, let's give God the best praise that we have right there in your home, right there in your car, right there in your job. It's okay. His glory fills the temple wherever you are. So guys, right now, just keep your hands lifted and let us pray. Father, it is your honor. It is your glory. It is wisdom and strength and dominion that's ascribed unto you, O oh God. Father, we kneel ourselves and posture ourselves as a child before you, God, in this moment. God, we pray now for those who may have lost a loved one to this pandemic, and we pray, God, strength and hope, God, as you rebuild lives. God, I pray now that even in this moment that we posture our hearts to receive the truth of this word, Father, and that we know that there's hope for every soul. And Father, then because of that, we'll praise you knowing our best days are ahead of us in Jesus Christ's name. And everyone that agree with this prayer said, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, come on, give one more hand clap because you love him. Yes, 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 yes. Woo, I'm excited to be here sharing this gospel. And so, um, man, it's a great day today. At the end of this message, we get a chance to give our hope offering. Those of you who are watching this live, and I, I just take, you, take a moment right now. Don't be a square. Share. Go ahead and share. Bring somebody in with you right now. And uh, man, just tell them, hey, we're going to be taking up our once a year offering. And if they feel compelled to help us, you know, hope for today, hope for tomorrow, and hope for the world. And uh, we are able to do that through our Hope Offering. So far, it's been going really good for our church. And uh, But man, you still have time to give. I know we gave ours yesterday. Uh, we were fired up about that. And, and so uh, you have time for that too. But man, we've been in this series, and I know you've been enjoying it, Re-You, Discovering a New You. And I, I know you've really been enjoying it, because I've been enjoying it. I'm finding out things about myself that I never knew. And so in week one, <clears throat> we talked about learning how to rethink. And um, in rethinking, we know if we can change the way we think, we can change the way we behave, which now change our purpose. Then the next week, we stole from the prophet JC, and we said, allow me to reintroduce myself, because we understand that when we change, we change from the inside to the outside. And other people see the outside, but they don't understand what's going on on the inside. So we have to reintroduce who we are. And last week in the ravaging uh, approach, we talked about re 
vision, seeing again, anewing, an, a new vision, seeing the vision the way God sees. We learn that how we see determines how we live. Because with my glasses, when I see, it determines how I walk. It determines on how I get there from stumbling and bumbling and bumping over things. But it determines how we live. And this week, say this week, this week, we are going to talk about rebuilding. Say rebuilding. Yes, we're going to rebuild. And, and I'm excited about this particular message because we live in a broken and fractured society. We've seen things happen in our society that are untoward God. And, and uh, let, let's, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we seen the insurrection on the Capitol and they broke windows. But I love the fact that when it showed up for the inauguration, every window was fixed. Every door was fixed. Why? Because you don't just leave things broken. You have to pick up the pieces and put them back together. And that's what God does with our lives. You know, just in my lifetime, just in my lifetime, on yesterday I turned 41 years old and I'm pretty fired up about that. Hey, hey, 41, never looked this fine, you know. And uh, 41 years old, I've watched the foundation of Christianity be torn down by small chips being broken away. Starting in the 1960s, we watched our Christianity being chipped down by one piece at a time. Christianity has gone from a respected way of life to widely being considered a terrorist, bigot organization. Yes, just in one lifetime, we went from when the pastor shows up, he gets respect, now to when the pastor showed up, people feel like we're, we're uh, coming against their freedoms or, or hampering them, and it's now considered a terrorist organization. We have the responsibility, though, to rebuild the foundation to the glory of God. We have the responsibility. Those of you who name Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you ascribe to that word Christian, which simply means Christ-like. We have the responsibility to build the foundations and then put up the walls and put up the rooms and put up the ceiling and, and cover the house and build the house correctly. Our scripture we're going to launch from is Isaiah 58, verse 12, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it says this, and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. There's a new saying now talking about some, hey, the streets are talking, and we're talking in the streets. Well, I want to repair what the streets are saying. Uh, occupy all streets, not wall streets. And so we're going to neighborhoods, to broken society, going to broken humanity, and we're going to be the repairers of the breach. I like that word in there. It says, for generations, yeah, yeah, yeah. we shall raise up the foundation of generations. Uh, I've watched, and it bothers me so much, I've watched us as we become progressive in our faith and understanding what grace truly is, we want to throw the baby out with the water. In other words, we want to throw holiness out with freedom. But we can't have freedom if we're not walking holy. We want to throw sanctification out with us being culturally relevant. But we can't be culturally relevant in God's eye if we're not walking out sanctification, which is a process. We can't do that. Come on. Are you hearing me this morning? Are you hearing me? I'm talking loud enough so you can. Yeah. Look at this statement. You cannot rebuild what you are not first willing to admit is broken. Let me put it in King James. If you say you haven't sinned, you are a fool. We cannot reveal what we're not admitting is broken. We're ignoring it. I've never seen anything ignored fix itself. I have a garage at home that I need some help with. I'm sending out an SOS. I got a whole living room, bedroom, everything in my garage. And every time I walk past it, I ignore it. But I get mad every time I see it. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? That's the same thing we do when we don't acknowledge that things are broken. 
We're broken. We're, we're divided. We're severed. We're living in the most divisive time in the history. Listen, in the history, I'm talking about Civil War. I'm talking about the 1960 riots. I'm talking about the Los Angeles riots. I'm talking about when it riots broke out because Rodney King. We are divisive. Why? Because we're smarter and we know how to navigate and manipulate our way to get our way in divisiveness. And so we're watching uh, some people on this side and some people on the other side, and Jesus is standing in the middle and saying, let's rally around what's, compo, what, what, what's, what's comparable to all of us, but we're looking at the juxtaposition between white and black, from Republican and Democrat, from rich and poor, from, from, from all these things. But God says all that will come together if you just come and rebuild what was broken. What was broken? It was us taking Jesus out of the equation. And so if we're going to discover our new self and get all these racial tensions and, and political uh, storms that's going on, we have to put Jesus in the middle. Amen. Come on. Because I believe if Jesus was here, he wouldn't be a Republican or a Democrat. Come on. Oh, yeah, I just said it. I just said it. But I believe he'll stand for the kingdom and he'll put us back together. Look at this. When we fall and become broken... Symptoms will begin to occur, occur. What are they? Isolation, fear, shame, and death. Isolation, fear, shame, and death. If you're feeling any one of those, there's a broken place in your life. It's like when we sin. The first thing we do is isolate ourselves, and then we're afraid other people are going to find out. And then if they find out, we walk in shame. And the next thing you know, we commit, assassin, we commit suicide, purpose of our purpose and of our, our relationships. We, we kill things. Why? Because that's a sign and a symptom of being broken. So humanity has slowly fallen apart. It didn't happen overnight. Um, they anesthetized us. They, 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 they put us to sleep. Look at this. It didn't happen overnight. This is something that has happened, hasn't happened overnight, but it has been subtly done by cultural massaging of godly standards. Wow. Slowly done. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to go to this club one night because my friends want to go. And then the next day, oh, it ain't nothing happened. I'm going to go the second night. And then ain't nothing happened. I'm going this way. And then before you know it, you're wrapped up in that culture. It's culture massaging us. It's telling us that uh, the standard of God is no longer good enough. Wow. And culture has been doing that for years. And so it massages us to sleep. It anesthetizes us. I like, well, I had three knee surgeries, and, and on my knee surgeries, every time they inject me with the anesthesia, they'll say, count from 10 backwards. Why? Because it doesn't happen instantly. They don't want you to fall asleep instantly. They want you to fall asleep in a period of time. That's the same thing the enemy's been doing to you. Look, look what, it, it's not a new trick. He did it in the garden. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, he tells, he tell, I mean, Genesis chapter 3, he tells Eve, he says, if you eat of this tree, you will not surely die. In other words, did God really say that? Oh, you better, oh, come on. I'm preaching good right there. Some of y'all need to run and tear up your living room set. Listen, did God really do that? Did God really say that? Did he really put that standard in place? And she was like, well, I, I guess and she, she partaked of the fruit. That's where we all go, to that same place. And then we become a fallen, broken creation. So here are a few things that have been broken that I've noticed. Just a few things, not an exhausted list. But these are a few things. Number one, moral consciousness. Morals are gone out the window. We don't care about character anymore. It's all about appeasing me. And I, so, so what if they have bad character? I'm watching, and it bothers me, I'm watching pastors fall at an alarming rate and still stand in the pulpit. Yes, grace is sufficient, but there are consequences to your sin. Sin has a stain. It has a stain. And, 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 and it should convict us to want to live a more holy life. Not keep doing what we're doing. 
and perpetuating the lie and perpetuating the, lie, the sin and perpetuating all these things. No, we're watching moral consciousness go out the way. Uh, divorce is at an all-time high. It, it went down for a little while, but now it's spiking back up past 70% amongst Christian marriages. Think about that. Christian marriages. Abuse and, 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 and racism. We're watching. That, that, that statement, I thought it would go away, but it says the 11 o'clock hour is the most segregated hour in the world on a Sunday. Our churches are still segregated. But let me stop and pause and parenthetically take an excursion and preach vision to you. But not here at Anchor. We're tearing down the walls of segregation amongst believers because we're here for one reason and one reason alone, and that's to worship the one true God. Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in his sight, rich, poor, employed, unemployed, in college, not in college, married, single, it doesn't matter. We're going to model heaven here on earth in Anchor Chapel. Come on, somebody. It's the last installment of this. I may as well go all the way in, right? <laughs> Come on. And so the second thing is the family construct. It's broken. We watch this redefine. The government is redefining what the family construct looked like, telling a man he could be with a man, a woman he could be with a woman. The child now is, can, can file for divorce from their parents. What is that? That's not God's plan. The family construct it's supposed to be identified by the one who created the family, and that's God. And so we have to make sure that it doesn't stay broken. We got to pick up the pieces. The third thing is the unity of all men. I just talked a little bit about that, about the divide that we have going on. And the fourth thing, and probably the biggest thing, is biblical faith in the one true God. I know in our culture, they say there's many ways to God. It's not true. It is not true. Fake news. Okay? That's fake news. You can't get to God through Muhammad. You cannot get to God through Pali Krishna. You cannot get to God by, by, by Scientology. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. And so there is only one way, and so we have to have biblical faith in the one true God. Our, our foundation of salvation, it says we are saved by grace through faith. In Christ Jesus, it's not faith in my ability. It's not faith in some man that was not perfect and lived upon the earth and went to the cross for me. I've checked Muhammad tomb. I've checked Pali Christian tomb. I've checked Buddha tomb, and they're still there. But if you check the tomb of Jesus Christ, it is empty and vacant. So he is the one true God, and he rose with all power in his hand. I'm preaching good this morning. Ooh, I got my Jesus juice on. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jesus juice. But anyway, God does not allow lies to stay in ruin. He doesn't allow lies to stay in ruin. He, he always desires them to be rebuilt better than they were before the destruction. Everything God rebuilds is better. Say better. Come on, type that in the chat. Say, I'm better. Come on, I I'm waiting. We waiting. I got people watching. You better start typing, I'm better. I see you wrote. You better type, I'm better. All right? You better type, I'm better, Corey. Danielle, I see you. Andre, you better, hey, hey you better be watching. I'm, I'm looking at all you guys. Ollie, hey, mom, mom, I'm on you too. You're not here to whip me. So you better type in the chat, better. I'm better. Then before, look, Psalms 11, 1 through 3 says this, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend and bow. They have fitted their arrows to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. Verse 3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? 
We cannot stand by idly and watch the enemy destroy the foundation of our faith. We must rebuild and fortify the walls to protect them. The scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. But the strong tower is only as strong as the foundation, which is our faith. The house that you're in has a foundation. The car that you drive, it has a foundation. Everything starts with a strong foundation. Can, can, can you hear me? Are, are you learning something? Am I boring you? Okay, I'm glad. I can hear you all there. Y'all better talk back to me. But here it is. We have to protect them because this is the part where we have to get it as the ecclesia, the called out ones, the, the gathering of the church, because we're not in this building. I've been telling y'all this for weeks, not even knowing this was going to happen. But we are the church, not this building. So when I'm talking about rebuilding, I'm not talking about tearing this building down and rebuilding a new one. I'm talking about you and us in society. And God has commissioned all of us to rebuild together. We can't do it on our own. It takes a conjoined effort. It takes all of us together to rebuild these foundations and rebuild what God wants us to. And it takes all of us together to rebuild lives and make sure that you are healthy. Do you hear me, church? Because there are some broken places in your personal life. You ain't got to admit it to me. God knows. But you got to put, look, the potter wants to put you back together again. Take, you're the clay. He's the potter. You put yourself on his spinning wheel and let him shape your life the way you want. Can I get an amen? 1 Peter 2, 5 through 9 says this. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. Being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will, be, will not be put to shame. Verse 7, So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light. I know we quote the last part of that scripture, verse 9, and we always say that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are called to his own. But you have to read it in context context. Notice that Peter, Petrus, the rock, begins to pin this. Peter pins this, and he says, we are all living stones fitly joined together. Why? To build up with Christ being the chief cornerstone. What am I saying? Right where you are, whatever is broken, your finances, your family, your friendships, your relationships, whatever it is, if you put the chief cornerstone in place, he'll line out the rest of your life. The cornerstone is meant there to fortify whatever is being built. Whatever is being built. I don't know. You may be hurting right now because someone ran out on you. You may be broken. The Bible says God is near to the broken heart. You may have lost someone during this pandemic. God can rebuild that soul that's broken. You can stand up and declare, it is well with my soul. Whatever you're dealing with, God say, if you put Jesus as the chief cornerstone, you can build and fortify the walls. Do you want to rebuild? Come on, type that in the chat. Say, I'm rebuilding better. I'm rebuilding better. Come on, go ahead. When I check this later, I want to see it. I want to see all the, you declaring over your life, I'm rebuilding better. Even right now, we're, we're taking this break because of the pandemic. And it's fine. It's okay. But watch this. When we come back, we're going to be better. 
I believe there are going to be new families. There are going to be families that partner with us. I believe we're going to bust, burst out of the seams of this building when we come back. Why? Because we're going to keep preaching this gospel, and it's going to keep going out. And when they see your new house, I'm talking about your new self, they're going to want to be a part of what you built it. Because you built it debt free. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. Yes, he did. So in conclusion, Haggai 1 and 8 says this. <clears throat> and this is a commission to you. Go up to the hill country. Bring lumber and rebuild my house, the temple. Rebuild my house, the temple, that I may be pleased with it and be glorified. Says the Lord, accepting it as done for my glory. God gets glory out of when you rebuild your marriage. God gets glory when you rebuild your faith in him. God gets the glory when your moral consciousness lines up with the word of God. God gets the glory when we begin to, to, to see our lives become whole again. God gets the glory. Do you hear me? God gets the glory. I got another thing for you to type. Type. To God be the glory. Come on, put your hand on your chest. Say, to God be the glory. Whew. I feel his presence. Come on, do you feel his presence? I feel his presence. Come on, just, just, just lift your hands. I feel his presence. Whew. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So who wants to know how we rebuild? So let me give it to you. This is how we rebuild. Number one, put God first in everything. Put God first in everything. Take a man and says, Thou shalt have no other gods before the, our God, the one true God. Put God first in everything. Number two, preach the gospel to the poor. That's right. What, what does that mean? That means you bring good news about good things. The Bible says beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news about good things. We go to the poor, and that's not just financially, but it's also poor in spirit. That means they're bankrupt spiritually. They don't know where to turn. They're hurt. They, they feel like they, they, they don't know where they are in the gospel. And what we do, we bring good news that God still loves you. He loves you too much to leave you where you are. While you were yet a sinner, Christ died. There is nothing you can do to behave yourself out of the love of Jesus Christ. It, it's good news about good things. Telling them about Jesus Christ and that he's coming back. Preach the gospel to the poor. Another thing is, by healing the brokenhearted. How do we bring healing to the brokenhearted? We just be there with them. The Bible says rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. And so we, we bring healing by letting them know that they don't have to walk through brokenness alone. That Jesus promised he'll be with them always. I said this earlier that God is near to the brokenhearted. Let them know that their posture of brokenheartedness brings God closer to them because there's no father that will hear his child cry and not show up. He wants to heal your broken heart. The next one is declare freedom to those who feel captive. Declare freedom to those who feel captive. Man, this is good news because chains no longer have to bind my ankles. They call them fetters in the Bible where they bind their ankles. I, I, you, you can declare freedom to those who are captive. We have the right to tell our culture and our generation that they are free. Why? Because the scripture said it this way. It says, he who the son sets free is free indeed. It says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And God is right there in your home. God is right there with your family. God is on that job. God is right there in your relationship. God is right there in your finances. So you are not a prisoner to your creditors. You are not a prisoner to your debt. Shameless plug. We're getting ready to start Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. And, and, and God wants to free you with that. You can't get free 
from overwhelming debt. You li Listen, we do marriage counseling here at this church. If you're having rocky problems, you can go online and request counseling. Why? Because we know that God can free you from the anger and unforgiveness in your heart. You can be free from sickness. Why? Because Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Rapha, he provides and he heals. He does. And the last one is this. And this one here, I love, is we give hope to every soul. <laughs> hey, you thought you was going to get out of here without me plugging anchor, huh? <laughs> this, is, this is my PSA announcement. God gives hope to every soul. Hope to every soul. Do you hear me? What is hope? Hope is a confident expectation in a good end, a great ending. Confident expectation in a great ending. I have an expectation that everything is going to be all right. They used to sing a song back at the old church. That, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. That was what they used to say. Jesus told me <laughs> everything's going to be all right. I know I'm off key, but, but you can try that. Jesus told me that there's hope for every soul. Jesus Christ, the hope of the world, that's who he is. And I pray that as you rebuild, you will see these things rebuilt in your life. This is how you rebuild. So, guys, as you know, we've been talking, and we've been fasting 21 days. This is the 21st day. Woo, woo. Oh. It's the 21st day, and so with that being said, man, this is the hope offering. This is hope offering. Earlier, we talked about one of the four things, how we accomplish our vision, and that's we give generously. Right now, right where you are, God is tugging at your heart. God is tugging at your heart. There are some things that you're hoping for in 2021. I'm here to tell you that God will honor that hope. Watch this. It says, brothers, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation, because tribulation work is patient. Patient work is hope. Faith. Patient work is faith. Faith work is hope. And watch this. Your hope will never be made ashamed. It'll never be made ashamed. Look, I'm hoping, listen, as the pastor of this church, I can't wait. By the end of, by, by May, I'm hoping that we see 300 passionate worship in attendance here. Yes, I'm putting it on blast. I'm not afraid. 300 passionate worship in attendance. I'm, I'm hoping our A-team quadruple. I'm looking at A-groups, anchor groups all around our city where people are gathering around the Word of God in common interest for the glory of God. I'm, 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 I'm hoping that our church is whole and healthy. We have a healthy house. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we're prepared and we're evangelizing every soul. I'm hoping that we have impact and influence in our community and beyond. I'm hoping that God will, by the end of the year, we see over 600 people in passionate worship at the church. Don't be afraid to put your hope on blast. I'm hoping that my family, we find multiple streams of income so we can give more. Oh, don't mess with me. I put my hope on blast. <laughs> it's hope. And so you can go online and you can fill out a hope card and send it in, or you can bring it by during the week and drop your hope card off. Um, but if you want to give right now, God, I'm prompting you. It may be $10. It may be $20. I don't know what it is. Uh, I know what the number God told us, and, and we gave, and it was a sacrificial give. And we gave sacrificially. And there's many other people who gave sacrificially. Why? Because I know God would never ask me to sacrifice something that he would not return a hundredfold. God is asking you to sacrifice. And let's look at this scripture before we pray for hope. It says, Hebrews 6, 18 through 19. So God has given both his promise and his oath. <clears throat> promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. 
19. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through this curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Come on, this hope. Come on, put that in the chat. This hope. This hope. And this hope means differently to all you. I just told you what I'm hoping for. But for you, it could be just, hey, I'm paying my house off this year. Hey, I'm getting out of debt this year. Hey, my family is going to be as healthy and together as it always ever been in the history. It's this hope. It's this hope. So right now, you can go online. I think we have a screen um, that will show you how to get in our website. And uh, do, we, do we have that? I, I think we do. Um, you can go to our website, and you can go and put your hope offering, and, and you can go online, allow your hope offering to be done that way. It'll prompt you and show you how to put your hope offering in. And also, you can put your hope prayer. Big hope. Big hope. If it don't scare you, hope again. Make sure it's done. So now I want to pray for all of you that your hope is not made of shame because that's what the Word says. So come on, let's just lift our hands to God. Father, we thank you, God, that you allow us to re ourselves, to discover a new us. And God, on this 21-day journey of prayer and fasting for hope, God, I pray that lives were re renewed and bodies were refreshed and that we come out stronger, stronger than we were before. God, I pray now, God, that as we give our offerings, God, as we render our offerings unto you, God, I pray now, God, that these sacrifices will be a sweet-smelling fragrance into your nostril. God, I pray, God, that every prayer that is laid down, God, without shame, but full of faith, full of hope, the thrill of hope that they have, God. I pray, God, that their hope is not a shame. God, give them boldness to speak it in the darkness. Give them boldness to declare it late in the midnight hour. Give them boldness to declare their hope, for you are our living hope, O oh God. And God, I pray for those that don't know you, that they'll draw closer to you. Let them know Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. God, I pray, God, that their, their lives will be radically changed because the indwelling of Holy Spirit. God, that they'll live for you and they'll be blessed by your presence and, and your encompassing anointing. Give them purpose. Give them hope. And God, I pray because they accept you as their Lord and Savior that they'll never, ever be the same. So, Father, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray all of this. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise right now. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise. I'm standing with you. I'm believing with you. It is so. Amen, amen, and amen. Hey, guys, I love you and I thank you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I can't wait to see you guys. Hey, call me, text me, email me. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Instagram. Hit us up on YouTube. Go to our website, submit a form. Let us know how your family doing in this time. And we're asking you guys, listen, we're asking you guys, 100 days, mask up. Mask up so we can curb this pandemic. Do your part. Do your part. You're not just maxing up for you, but you're maxing up for others because we love others compassionately. That's part of what we do. And so, man, we want you guys to be careful so you can continue to have a healthy life. Don't let corona fatigue get you, but, you know, hold fast to that. And I can't wait till we see your face in this place again. Hey, I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.